threat of disaster is never pleasant. Welcome to the Casual Preppers Podcast. These safety measures are essential. The only place for prepping, survival, and entertainment. This will be your source of survival instructions and information. Every member of the family must be coached in the business of survival. Here are your hosts, Cam and Kobe. Q&A, my friend. <laughs> yep. Had some... Uh... Some that tugged at the heartstrings this time. I know there was a few, right? A little deeper. Yeah. I didn't really think about Gosh, it. Gosh, man. So making us feel things. Yeah. We, we don't like to Get feel things. Get your tissue box ready for this one. <laughs> now me, because I'm a robot. <laughs> That's right. Gosh, man. <laughs> oh man. My family's starting to call me the Terminator. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty sweet, actually. <laughs> actually, they don't, but I was just kind of throwing that out there. Like, maybe. Refer to me as the Terminator. You can't call me the Terminator since I got no feelings. <laughs> yeah. So, you know. I want to tell you, though, okay. before we get into all this, yeah. do you ever think about medicine and taking care of band aids and stuff? I think about with a lot family? of different things. <laughs> well, don't forget about self reliant medical care. Okay. Okay. Because yeah. it's a big deal. Yeah. There ain't going to be urgent cares during <laughs> the apocalypse. Maybe, I don't know. I don't know. Someone will open one up. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> Apocalyptic urgent care. <laughs> yeah. Um, you five, five, six. But you really need to know um, some of the basic stuff, uh, basic medical um, survival tips and stuff. And there's no better book to get than the Prepper's Medical Handbook. No way, dude. It's written by an MD. His name is William W. W. Ford. W. W. <laughs> I about got a little hap good out of it. A little hap good came out. Um, but it's such a good book to just refer to some of the basic stuff you are likely to encounter and need to take care of yeah. um, for your family. Um, it talks about building your own fact. It has like, what do you do with uh, um, different plant infections and stuff? <laughs> I just forgot, I would have forgot the name. Oh my gosh. Poison uh, Ivy. Oh, Holy poison crap. Ivy. It's one of those days. So plant. enjoy everybody. I got a plant infection. <laughs> Help me out. Can we restart? <laughs> no, no, no. We Starting cannot. out so bad. <laughs> no. Anyways, it's a good book. <laughs> Get those plant infections under control. Yeah. Man, Jap- he's like, all right, I'm pulling the ad. <laughs> Chapter nine, plant infections. <laughs> uh, Holy crap. That's uh, awesome. <laughs> Anyway, he's a, he's a doctor, everybody. Go to preppersmedicalhandbook.com. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's do this, Or man. Amazon. Q&A <laughs> time. All right, this one came from Casual Preppers Memes on Instagram. If you guys aren't following them, you gotta, because they've this. been throwing out some good memes lately. Uh, I can't remember what the ones were this week. Did you, did you see the memes? That they, I think I sent you one. It was about the carpet. Yeah, it was about the carpet, remember? Like rolling up the car. I can't remember what it was. Pretty that funny. one was pretty good. Uh, they ask, if you had the chance to tour and record a podcast inside inside one of the world's most famous bunkers, which would you choose and why? Upon completion of recording the episode, you'll also have to live here for six months. Months. <laughs> <laughs> choose wisely. <laughs> Yeah, I don't we know. might want to restart this one today. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> Good hell. What I'm, did I okay, say? I, I feel better now. What did I say? Because we both are... M- months? <laughs> what did I say? I don't know. There's like an N missing there. <laughs> months. 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 This month. <laughs> Freaking we're idiots, dude. Uh, we wore our tongues out. The way that sounds. Just weird. so you guys know, we are the number 19 podcast <laughs> in the philosophy category on, on iTunes, this uh, this uh, is confirms what, it. This, confirms this is exactly it. why we are where we are. Good lord. Anyways, okay. <laughs> I'm gonna, Six solid months. Yeah, month, 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 month. Dude, <laughs> I'm going. I'm sticking. I'm going with Cheyenne Mountain. I know that dude. That, that was hard because I was like, well, Kobe took the best. one. I took the best one. Yeah, so many cool. Like that's where NORAD is. I know. Man. Like that's so freaking cool, and it's like. Thousands of feet under granite, like solid granite. Who wouldn't want to live somewhere with a lake of diesel? <laughs> That's what I was gonna say. There's, <laughs> there's five lakes. One of them is just diesel. <laughs> so, like, if you take your jet ski in there, a dream come true. Get in the right lake with your jet ski because you don't want to get in the <laughs> diesel lake, fall over, and then be covered in oh, it. Oh man. Yeah, I know. So anyways, that's what I would do. It's like one of the safest places on the planet. So if I'm going to stay there for six months, at least I'm going to feel good about yeah, that. I that think that's, of it. that's the one I would choose, really. I read a thing that said up to 600 people work in there every single day. So there's lots of amenities for all of those people. Basically, when there's you- There's a subway in there, isn't there? 
Um, was that the one that has like a, a sandwich subway, shop? A sandwich I shop. think so. Yeah, I didn't. I thought maybe you were talking about. Yeah, I got transferred train. to the Cheyenne <laughs> Complex. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Corporate sending me to assistant manager out there at the <laughs> subway inside How, of the can mountain. You imagine going to work. They're like, yeah, well, this guy must be a big deal. You're just a subway worker. <laughs> you make us. I'm a sandwich artist. <laughs> yeah. All right. That's right. They're artists. Yeah, the sandwich artists. But yeah, no. So you, you, they also have like workout facilities. They got a spin gym. A oh, hospital, yeah. chapel, convenience store, probably an urgent care. That's where Cam would be working. <laughs> I'll take it, man. Yeah, I know. I'm huh? working there. Yeah, and they got five lakes. One of them is diesel fuel. So, you got diesel in your eyes again? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I swallowed Second a bunch of diesel. Second time this week, I've seen some diesel injuries. I keep swallowing diesel when I fall in. <laughs> um, I'll tell you, you'll be burping that up for months when I swallow <laughs> gas. Yeah. It'll be a long time. Yes, yeah, for Not sure. Not on purpose. No. Um. So the other one, this one I would consider just because of all the high tech. Oh, before you know, we move on, stuff. before I forget, happy birthday to Strats. It's his oh, birthday today. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, I was just man. thinking about that. I don't know how, he's probably 65 Family or something. Family named after the muscle group. <laughs> Pulled my damn Strats again <laughs> last night. So anyways, happy, That's cool. happy right. birthday, Strats. He's, a, he's, he's our good buddy. 65, you said? I don't know. Yeah, 70. He yeah, might be 70. Cool. Good job, He's getting buddy. old. He's getting old. Yeah. <laughs> um. So the survival condo. Yeah. That's that missile silo. But mm-hmm. it's all tricked out with like mm. the latest, greatest stuff. For you sure. Know, yeah. You've got um arcade. Oh, they oh do. here, let me read some of the stuff you got. Arcade, you got a dog park in there. You got <laughs> classroom, which is super fun. Library. Yeah, I like See, books. that would be pretty I wonder what they would put in there. Or books, what they have in books, there. Books probably. Well <laughs> that's usually what they like, put in libraries. You know if somebody's building a library mm-hmm. with the mindset of building a bunker. Yeah. I wonder what kind of books you're gonna get. Uh, yeah, who knows, huh? Movie theater, yeah. digital weather station. You watch Barbie. You high speed elevator. Just ride that all day. Yeah. And what kids would do. Uh, probably. Exercise facility, indoor pool that's actually water. It's not diesel. Nope. Military grade security, so you don't have to worry about the outside. Sure. Hydroponic food. Mm. Like, it's just cool. You can visit all these different little levels and, you know, just, it's kind of like a new theme. Yeah. To every I, spot. I think it'd be awesome. So this one would be cool. Yeah. Um, I mean, the Cheyenne Mountain um, is. You know, tried and it's true, cooler. Really, it's cooler. They've tested a couple of nukes over it. I think. Yeah, <laughs> it is cooler. But I was like, ah, well, I'll take. The- oh, it has an indoor shooting range too. Oh yeah. So you, I mean, you've got like it's almost like you're on a cruise ship. Basically, for you're a on a cruise time. ship. Yeah. So. Anyway, I like that. Yeah. So yeah. there you go. The braided boss. Uh, yeah, mom. Uh, it's a. M- I'm. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> I like uh, we're struggling today. Just uh, these braids. If they touch my shoulder uh, one more time, you don't don't do it. I'll pull you out. I'll pull you out. You s- son of a. <laughs> you bossing those around? <laughs> yeah, you tell your hair who's boss, baby. <laughs> Talk to it mean again. <laughs> I like that. Pull my hair. <laughs> um. Wilderness guides often refer to the rule of three, mm-hmm. which says that a person can live for three minutes without air, three days without water, and three weeks without food. Three minutes without casual preppers. Yes. Um, my family members adopted this and added, um, but you cannot last three seconds without hope. Mm-hmm. Their, um, their belief in survival in extremely trying times is the will to live, and the will to live stems from hope or from, from some faith. Uh, wanted to know your thoughts on this. While I know that you often say your families are your reason to survive, uh, outside of that, if they were not there, mm-hmm. do you think it's just human instinct or do you think focusing on your own individual spirituality plays into our willingness to adapt and survive? Yeah, that's a that's a good question. That's a deep right question. About, yeah, yeah. I do think that most people do have this kind of built-in will to survive. It's like human instinct. I too, really right? think it is. Otherwise... There'd be a lot more dead people laying on a road somewhere, <laughs> right? Like, you know, there, there has to be that that instinct to to want to he lift the wheel. <laughs> and I mean, people do, but yeah, they the do. majority are going to right. have a drive to to survive. Yeah, I mean, otherwise that's I mean, a movie. Drive to survive. <laughs> <laughs> drive to survive. Fast and Furious fifteen. Five episodes. <laughs> Fast and Furious. Five series. <laughs> um. I think that's a lot of the reason that preppers do what they do because they have that built-in innate sense of, like, I got to survive. Even though there's not, like, a specific threat that's, you know, uh, looming over us right yeah. now. I do. That think- might be dropping. I know that, like, 
Yeah. Uh, like once they lose their comforts, they're like, yeah. Oh. This ain't worth it. No. <laughs> you know, I to, sometimes I question my wife's will to survive. <laughs> like, you know. Live with a robot. Uh, or, she's been living with a robot for almost 20 years. She's gotten it down. So she's figured that out. <laughs> yeah. So if it's like an AI uprising, she'll fit right in. She'll that's be fine. True. Oh, okay. I oh, yeah. I deal with this every day. Yeah, that's, that's nothing new. That's fine with me. <laughs> but if like there's bad people outside trying to get in, nope. Yeah. I'm done. Right. If it's a global freezing, Mm-mm. done. No, no, she will not make it more than fifteen minutes. <laughs> not literally, will not make it more than fifteen minutes. Yeah. Um, I, I make fun of her a lot, but I'm not really making fun of her. Okay. Yeah, Cam? I understand. Like she's the best. There's no one better. Yeah. Okay. Love you, babe. <laughs> she's always, you make so much fun of me on the podcast. I'm like, I'm not really making fun of you. You're just the person I'm it's with the most. <laughs> This is a sport play for later on. And, and I'll be like, you remember what I said on the podcast? Yeah, you like that? You want to li- hit me? Hit me li- hard. Yeah, hit the robot, baby. Call me the Terminator. <laughs> <laughs> Call me the Terminator. I'll be back. And then I go to the... Never mind. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, and I do think that, um, you know, spiritual out, spirituality can play a part of that, you know, per, like whatever it is, if it's religious it beliefs or... No, it does. It doesn't even have to be religious beliefs, but some sort of like spirituality, whatever that might be, it does play a role. There's purpose. You yeah. Know, and they're like, yeah. I mean, you see those crazy survival stories about people like living on a boat or an island for months. Yep. Like they have to have some will. Like otherwise, yeah. why would you go through it? Right? Seriously. There's some, there's just something built into people. Yeah, I think. I agree. That, and some much more than others, you know, I, yeah. Like I, uh, I really like reading survival books like, I've, um, like Heart of the Sea and Broken, mm-hmm. The Endurance. Um, yeah. And you, there was always, like, the guys that were just, like, they were always assigning things and, like, they were driven. Yeah. And there was ones that, that had lost hope, and they usually died, like, quick. Mm-hmm. Like, I think I'm broken when they had the plane. They, when they crashed the plane, it's him, the pilot, and another guy. And the other guy just, start, once they, they could tell he was losing hope, he died within, like, two or three days. Wow. But they were there along with him, not eating more or anything. It's just, yeah. like, same situation. so powerful. Yep. And so... Yeah, I think I think you've got to think about that, and we've talked about that too. Yeah, it's like it's a big part of survival that you have to learn to. It's hard to do that, you know. Oh, for it's hard sure. to like. I'm gonna practice that this week. <laughs> I'm practicing hope this I'm week. Take babe. everything away. <laughs> pretend like I lost my leg. <laughs> See how well I did. I've been working on my hope skills <laughs> yeah. for a while. Hope's a tough one. Yeah, it is. Yeah, but I do. I like you said. I think it's instinct along mm-hmm. with like how you grew up and stuff like that. For sure. Yeah. Good question. Oh, I need you. Tony Mao. If, Mao. If, if someone could dedicate two or three hours per week towards learning a new skill for prepping, what skill or activity would you most recommend? That's, mm-hmm. that's a good amount of hours. Yeah, two or three hours. That's It that really is a good amount so of hours. Solid. Yeah. And you're asking which one for mm-hmm. new mm-hmm. new skill for well, prepping. Well, it just or says learning anybody. Learning a new skill. Yeah, learning a new skill for prepping. Uh, yeah, so if I was going to pick one skill that would be most beneficial across, you know, prepping and as well as, because again, I don't, I think if you're going to spend that amount of time, it's got to be something that it benefits other parts of your life as well. I do. I really do. So I, that's why I say like health and fitness, like how, how can you be go wrong with it? I agree with you. You yeah. know what I mean? It's hard. To, it's hard to like, like you said, that blends and improves all aspects. Yeah. If you have good health, I mean, you have a <laughs> your mental health's better. Yes, y- your physical strength, your ability to learn, your ability to continue learning. Mm-hmm. Like it's like that's the thing. I that, would agree with you. Yeah, and and again, like Cam said, it, this isn't just physical. This is this is mental as well, right? Yeah, and, and it, it all gets tied in. It's all this. connected for so, sure. So overall that, health, mm-hmm. I I agree with you there. Um, the only other one I kind of threw in there, I'm like, if you're looking for like a specific skills, maybe mm-hmm. like food related, sure, like gathering, harvesting, growing, cooking, preserving, like, you know, being able to do that with food more than just like most of our stuff's like half prepared or fully prepared yeah. and processed and sure. we just have to cook it. Um, knowing how to do all these different things is probably a good place to focus. Yeah. It's going to get you further and probably going to give you the ability to like do trade and stuff like that if. Yeah. Time got real hard. Yeah, they're coming. I bottle this. Like, my wife's been bottling raspberries quite a bit. And, oh, nice. And that's fun. Giving them out to, <laughs> giving them out to <laughs> the neighbors. That's exactly what she's doing with <laughs> yeah. them. So I was like, wait a minute. This is not benefiting me in any way. 
Yeah. You should have some That's I was like, she'll, she'll pick them, and I'm like, and she's like, stop, I'm going to bottle those. And I'm like, okay, what are you going to do with them? I'm going to put a little card on it and give it to the neighbor. And- <laughs> well, I'll just tell you what, we haven't got a bottle of raspberries yet. Well. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I guess we're just not as cool as the neighbors. <laughs> I, I don't know not. what's going on. We haven't made it that far. Haven't yet. made it that far. Waiting for fall harvest. <laughs> fall harvest. Okay. Yeah. So <laughs> makes sense. Uh, WM underscore Reese underscore photography. I can't wait to start following them and seeing those like peanut butter cup pictures. You know, <laughs> yeah. can't wait. Yeah. Um, women's Reese's photography. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Didn't we say it's like women's women Reese's. taking bites of Reese's <laughs> and stuff? It would take off if you're still it doing totally your photography. Would. Just think about it. Might man. as well. Just be yeah. like, oh, I'm taking a bunch of pictures of women eating Reese's. <laughs> <laughs> Some somebody get Reese's off on pieces, that too. peanut butter cups. Oh, what else do they have? She's good. Oh gosh, look at this girl. That's a big <laughs> bite, baby. <laughs> she didn't even chew it. Oh gosh, she swallowed that whole. <laughs> oh, you She gonna have peanut butter bread. <laughs> <laughs> peanut butter bread. Dang, look at that chocolate in there, up in the teeth. Um, <laughs> crevices and teeth are all filled with chocolate. <laughs> Close up. <laughs> so uh, yeah, end of days come. Okay, this is this is the question. Okay, <laughs> moving on. Okay, end of days comes. Okay, and you're all talking uh, solid wood. Taking. Min- oh my gosh. Taking. <laughs> and my eyes are still watery. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Y'all are taking a solid woodman's axe or a big machete style chopper and why? Mm-hmm. What, which one are you going to take? Uh, also, I am loving the scenarios podcast. My girlfriend got my girlfriend into prepping because of y'all. Booyah. And eating Reese's peanut butter. Yeah, she's gaining a little weight because she's been eating a lot of Reese's. <laughs> but I'm getting some good clothes up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. My portfolio was widening, though, <laughs> just like my girlfriend. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Um, he's like, I better not let her listen anymore. <laughs> no, she probably no. no she, yeah, so we've talked did. about this a couple of times. Like, there's, mm. there's, man, it, it's, it's tough. It's tougher than, like, immediately. I'm not gonna. It's, it's hard to just say, like, for sure, this one because mm-hmm. there's some pros and cons to both. I like the machete because it's just quicker, easier to, you know, wield and it feels chop. good in your hand. It does. Like, yeah, and an axe, a little harder to swing. I think. As a defense weapon, I'm, the machete is going to be a little better. Probably chopping and mm-hmm. slashing, you know, yeah. slashing. Although most of like the axe but murderer the axe, movies, yeah, they're all they do pretty yeah. good with the axe. They kill some people. American Indians, man, they mastered yeah. those freaking hatchets. They sure did. Tomahawk. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, um, I still and after you know, I still would probably go with the hatchet just because you've got yeah. that weight behind it, building, breaking, crushing mm-hmm. things like. It's a little more versatile. So. Yeah, that's like we we talked with Donnie Dust a, a few episodes ago, and that that was a kind of a we question did. we asked we'd, that, huh? we'd ask him, and he's like, "Yeah, I'd go for the small axe he's or like, hatchet." It's hard to beat because you can do so much. That's what he does, like build yeah. stuff yeah. and like he's chopping yeah. vines and mm-hmm. growing testosterone and all uh, over the place. Yeah, exactly, Se- secreting it. Yeah, it's just like <laughs> spilling out. It's like you know what I mean. I was next to him, my arms <laughs> got bigger. Yeah. Sorry, I spilled some testosterone on you. It just seeps <laughs> out of my pores. You look at his Instagram for like two seconds, yeah. you're like, man, I'm going to climb Everest next yeah, year. Yeah, I know, exactly. And then you don't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then you go and look at ours, and you're like, I just... <laughs> <laughs> then you go eat some Reese's. <laughs> yeah. What am I doing with my life? Exactly. <clears throat> um, but yeah, yeah, it's the good. hatchet, man. like it. This one came from Fork in the Forest. Okay. Yeah. Changed my life. I found a fork in the forest. What about a spoon in the forest? <laughs> mm. I like the spoon spork in the forest. <laughs> Can you all repeat the medical cocktail Kobe eats before going eating out? Oh yeah. Officially have that dad gut and can't enjoy my spicy foods anymore without a flask of Maalox in my pocket. A flask. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Kobe, what is it? I do, so this is actually Cam. Kobe's That's why it's a lot more stable. It's funny because people do get us mixed up quite yeah. frequently, um, which makes me laugh. But no, that's, I know it's kind of funny. That's at this Cam. Point. Yeah. Um, yes. <laughs> I'll <laughs> sell you the that, proper yeah. cocktail for a hundred dollars. Venmo yeah. me. Venmo. Um, so this isn't medical advice. You got to make that yeah, clear. For one, don't do this. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so this has worked doctor. well for me. Um, mm-hmm. 
I don't do it as much anymore because I feel like I've gotten better control mm-hmm. um, with with one of the medicines. Of your bowels? <laughs> yeah. Um, so I would take a Pepsid, mm-hmm. and then I usually would take an enzyme of some sort, which was either Beano or another brand. Um, lately, I've been using Saqqara um, pre and probiotic. I'm telling you, I think that thing works well. Mm. And then I would take like an anti-gas, like Gas X. Oh, okay. So yeah. Pepsid, an enzyme, like a food enzyme, and Gas X. Sometimes I would throw in, <laughs> just for fun, a little chaser. Yeah. Um, I would do, uh, uh, what is it? Um, Pepto? The, no, um, lactose intolerant, a little lactate. Oh, okay. I'd throw in one of those. Just, I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> just for fun. Yeah. It's for funny, the- I work in an allergy clinic and I do food testing all the time, but I won't do it on myself. You won't do it on yourself? I don't want to know. Yeah. So, but I don't, I don't, I honestly haven't had to use this since taking that one I was t- telling you, the Saqqara one. Yeah. Hopefully they're listening. Do you I take want, that like every day? I do. Okay. I do one every day. And it's a pre and pro antibiotic. And it also has um, what's in B. Probiotic, right? Not yeah. antibiotic. Yeah. Pre and pro uh, biotic. Did I say Pro-ic. antibiotic? You said antibiotic. Yeah. yeah. Pre and probiotic. Mm-hmm. Um, concoction and it has some uh, like Beano it has that same enzyme in there so mm. that one's I take that once every morning it says to take it twice a day and I have not had any issues so mm. for nice. dad bellies I'd, 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 I'd try that one nice it anyway. sounds good man yeah. <laughs> I like it the other concoction I did do for a while and it did work well really yeah so mm. if I get crazy if I know it's gonna get crazy then you then you'll yeah yeah so Makes sense. Um, Connor underscore Perkins 21 mm. Recommendations for prepping in an apartment or overall smaller living space? Yeah, this is a question we do get frequently. Um, and so, Cam probably had the best answer to this, but what yeah, was that? Go to listen to episode 26. Yeah, episode 26, apartment prepping. Yeah, we did like um, a whole episode. Yeah, that was actually a fun one because, like, we've all lived in apartments, right? Mm-hmm. At least, yeah. I think. Many of us. Or have. still do. Yeah. If you live in, yeah, if you live in a big city, you're probably living in an apartment. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we we talked in there a lot about like places to store uh, food and stuff like put cinder blocks under your bed and lift it up mm-hmm. and and stuff a bunch of boxes under there, you know your closet space utilize that even building like shelves a little higher up out of the view mm-hmm. that you can store on and then using your vehicle and stuff like that couch behind the you know move your couch a little away from the wall and stuff mm-hmm. it back there it doesn't look great so if no, you have somebody that loves the look of yeah. your apartment then. I don't know how you're going to do any of It's this. not going to be great, no. But um, just get a bunch of those shadow boxes stored all up in those. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's a great idea. That macaroni looks real nice <laughs> in a nice little contoured box. Exactly. But yeah, you got you to use that space uniquely, and you can still keep most of it hidden, but mm-hmm. your couch is going to be touching the ceiling. <laughs> it definitely is. <laughs> so, I, you know, I, all those things are great, but I, I would... M- just maybe change your focus a little bit to some other things that don't really take up space in your apartment. Cause there's a lot of things you can do yeah. that you don't have to just like store gear and bottles and stuff in, in an apartment. Number one, focus on emergency plan and threat assessment. That takes up Nobody zero does that. space. You know, it's like, that's what you should be doing anyway. Yeah. So, right. So that, that's something you can do without taking up, you know, you have like a piece of paper or you could even have it digital. So you don't, you don't take up any space. And I think everybody should start there anyways. So do that. Um, Focus on vehicle preps. Yeah. Like, how often are we in our cars? Um, those sometimes are just as important, if not more important, than the preps at your house. So If you're in a city, your bug out plan is yeah. probably your number one. <laughs> yeah. Again, it takes no space in your apartment, but is so freaking important for preparedness. So, focus on your vehicle preps. Skills, they take up no space except for brain space. So, figure that out. <laughs> Financial preps. Um, yeah. Yeah. It really, it's zeros and ones these days. Obviously, there's a little bit of cash and stuff involved, but it takes up no space, my man. Health, fitness, self-defense, all take up no space. And then when you are storing stuff, focus on quality over quantity. Sometimes we're like, you know what? These aren't the best, but I'm going to get a whole bunch of them yeah, I because I have this case, space. You really need to do that. <clears throat> but I think you need to assess. Should do it anyway. Yeah, I think you need to assess, like, maybe I just need to get better things and less of them. You know, especially if you're if you're low on space, that's just how it is. Security should obviously be a pretty big focus because you have a lot of people around you, and you're probably in somewhat of an urban area if you're in an apartment. Um, water bobs, water filters, those things. You know, instead of getting six thousand gallons of water on hand, you might have to do things like a water bob and just extra water filters. And then when you're buying items, do your best to get multi-use items um, to yeah. make the best of your space. <clears throat> Anyways, that's some. 
tips that I had. I like that. Might help. That's great. Yes, sir. This one came from Mr. Montanez One. Hmm. My first child is first doing... one to ever. <laughs> yeah, create that. Um, or second because he probably just couldn't do Mr. Montanez <laughs> yeah. and he had to do one. How ironic! Mm-hmm. You got the number one, but you're not. But you're not the number one. My first child is doing less than a month. Any last minute items y'all would suggest stocking up on for my per upcoming personal apocalypse? Also, I put both of these together. Yeah, Moose having and Buck. a kid is a personal apocalypse. Yeah. So it came from <laughs> Moose and Buck. You think that's like his his name is Moose and his wife's name is Buck or other way around? <laughs> Moose and Buck. Me and, yeah. <laughs> getting right. married this weekend, Moose and Buck. <laughs> Moose and Buck are getting hitched. <laughs> you know? I like yeah, that. I like it. Um, as a first-time dad at a relatively young age, he's 14, uh, what preps... <laughs> I focus on you didn't even hear that, did you? No, what you Obviously, say? he's I just got mind. a little work text. Yeah, it's all right. Obviously, water, food, shelter, but more in depth, what I need to prep for my newly made family. Thanks, guys. So I just put those both yeah. together because some of those are similar. Good question. <clears throat> yes. Yeah, so real quick for for that new baby and mother, make sure your wife or girlfriend is taken care of. Really, she's the one that's having the hard time here. You know, you're not going to breastfeed that baby. No, she's pushing a baby at her hoo ha. <laughs> Okay, she's going through it, man. So make sure she's got what she needs. That's the number one thing. Um, have a good book for that hospital stay because you're going to be hanging out on a really uncomfortable little half bed, half yeah, half uh, or ask chair. Him for Ambien while you're there. Yeah, exactly. Ask for Ambien. That's a good one. <laughs> um, um, make sure you know how to. Look, use I know she's struggling <laughs> a little bit. I know she went through well, a lot. What can I get? I need to get to sleep. Just put it on her bill. <laughs> okay, I don't care. Just add it to her bill. Probably has been asked. Yeah. Um, make sure you know how to use the car seat. Yeah. Because, like, if, I think it was, yeah, when our kids. The baby's and, laying out in the parking lot, and they're trying to get the Because, like, seat they, the nurse comes out with you to, yeah. to, the, to the. Oh, yeah, that's true. So they're you like, feel like an sure idiot. you're not going home yeah. in a wagon and a I'm, cart, like, looking like, at all the buckles, looking at the nurse at the same time. Like, am I doing this right? <laughs> you know? It's true. Practice strapping something <laughs> yeah. in there. Yeah. So you've got a little dog or something. Put the little dog in there and, and start strapping him it's in. It's true. Yeah. yeah. You want to look like you know what you're doing yeah. instead of like putting the strap across the yeah. baby's face. The nurse like, is like, you're doing that wrong. Okay. <laughs> so anyways, yeah. make sure you know how to use it. Well, I don't know what you want from me. I don't know. <laughs> Baby seat's in the front seat. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I just thought I'd put her on my lap. As There's a, a lot home. more space in the air conditioners up here. Mm, exactly. So I don't get it. Whatever. <laughs> Put her in the bed of the truck. She likes the fresh air. Wait, are you charging me for this too? <laughs> How much is this? Little trip out to the parking lot is going to cost me a thousand dollars. Seriously, <laughs> just covered on my insurance because I doubt it. Yeah. Get out of here. Anyways, yeah. So that's just for the new new dad. Yeah, baby coming. Um, items, and we've talked about this in other episodes too, mm-hmm. but um, like different items that I'd stock up on. I remember doing this when we were doing the podcast because I'd had. Yeah, uh, newborn. Um, water, obviously, you can be using a lot of water. The water's good. Water, but awesome you know, with water. baby with cleaning and um, washing and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So, plan on doubling or tripling up on your water. Supply. My baby drinks so much water. That baby's <laughs> pure water, baby. Pure water, baby. <laughs> yeah. Um, but formulas and everything like that, like formula goes fast <laughs> in every like disaster scenario. Sure. Or, yeah stock runs out like mm-hmm. it happens all the time so i would be buying extra formula when you go to the store sure if you're doing that because you're selfish and not breastfeeding my wife didn't breastfeed so <laughs> selfish you know what i mean they yeah. like shame you if you yeah. don't do that i'm like yeah. don't don't put, give into that crap mm-hmm. either way if she's breastfeeding mm-hmm. um i'd still be getting some formula for sure you just never know um mm-hmm. and then uh if you don't feel too embarrassed by it when you go to the checkups and stuff, maybe ask them for some formula samples because yeah. they get a ton of them. They do, um, yeah. At the, those clinics. They're so happy to give you a sample. Get a little sample and just use it as your storage. Mm-hmm. And then baby wipes and diaper rash cream. You're going to be dealing with a lot of diaper rash. Mm-hmm. No matter if you do things perfect, baby's going to get a big old rash. Yep. So No doubt, no doubt. There's my suggestions. I like it. Thanks, yeah. Cam. You want to read the next one? Yeah, double AV. Double AV. A-V-A-V. Yeah. <laughs> um... What, yeah, right. Uh, what music artist would you choose if you could only listen to one artist the rest of your life? Motorhead, man. Motorhead. Oh. 
That's it. That's it. Seal the Super deal. easy. Yeah. Yeah. And so for me, this is this is tough to choose. I can only choose one. It is pretty tough. I gotta I gotta find someone that has a huge catalog of music, right? Because you don't want like a new artist that's got one album and a single out. So Taylor Swift? No. <laughs> Dude, I was talking about this the other day. I'm like, she I think she might be the Antichrist or something. Like she is so popular. She's extremely everybody powerful. is enamored with her. Like something's she's going the new on. Oprah. She's sold her soul to the devil, or she is the devil. Yeah. <clears throat> she writes great music. Yeah. You know I, what I, mean? I agree. Like I, I don't get I, it. I don't get it either. Like, I'm it's like, insane. Why is she so insanely huge? Like, she's good. Yeah. But I don't feel like she's like no. Beatles type. No. Of, like, that's, it's like young girls and boys and their parents, they're all obsessed Same with Same thing anymore. Like, what the fudge? Yeah, they are. Dude. Like, I my don't, kids I, I don't, won't listen to anything else. I don't know. If she just hit it right. Yeah. Like, the timing and everything. Or, like you said, she sold her soul. My kids don't listen to anything else. It's only Taylor Does Swift. Does she really? Yeah. Or do they really? All three of them. Wow. Like, I, I'm like, do you, you guys know any no other artists? like, what in the hell has she got that no one else has? <laughs> like, do you guys listen to anything else? Yeah. Like, let's broaden our horizons a bit. <laughs> Every time we get, come on, Taylor Swift. <laughs> have you heard Danzig? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Motorhead's not bad, guys. Let's listen to some Tool. I don't yeah. know. Let's do it anyways. Um, it's weird. It is weird. <clears throat> I agree. And that. also, okay. So and also this artist or band has to have a variety of types of music and sounds, right? You don't want to pick like an EDM artist that's all just like techno dance. True. The rest of my life now. So I went with the Beatles because- <laughs> I went with Taylor Swift. <laughs> I went with, so <laughs> anyways, all anyways, I went with Taylor Swift. <laughs> um, no, I went with the Beatles just because they have a huge catalog of music and every album is so different. They have hits upon hits. Greatest rock band ever. You know, I it's not something that I listen to every single day, yeah. but I, I have all the albums and I've listened to it, but if I have it's to good. listen to it for the rest of my life... Yeah, that is that is a good pick. That's really tough. So in Runners Up, something like Garth Brooks, Third yeah. Eye Blind, Killers... Great stuff. I love all their their stuff, but you know, the old Beatles. Yeah, I that's. I mean, that's a really good one because I think the Beatles applies across so many ages. For sure, my kids are like, oh, I kind of like this. Yeah, it's good. Old stuff, people man. are like, this is the best. It's funny because I was at a um, a concert the other day. I was working the concert, I, um, and so there's lots of like young girls and boys there, yeah. teenage kids. You know how like all the teenagers all have always worn concert T-shirts, right? But in like. When we were young and in high school, it was like kind of cool to wear like a Led Zeppelin shirt because yeah. it was like classic rock, now. right? But I saw three, two or three girls wearing third eye blind shirts. Really? They have become like the classic well, rock. I was going to say, I'm still seeing a lot of Led Zeppelin yeah, shirts. Yeah. But now. you know what I mean? That's yeah. why I'm, I'm like, oh my God, classic I'm so old. rock. Yeah. I am so old. That is kind of disturbing. Yeah. Anyways. That's that's been slapping me in the face a lot lately. Yeah. That I'm so Along old. with your wife. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, yeah, for me, I don't know. Um, like, I kind of went with George Strait. I mm. tend to go back to him all the Interesting. time. Just because it's just, I don't know. I like it. He I had one know. album. There's one album, an early album that had like- I like all of his stuff. Unwound, and it had uh, Amarillo by Morning, I think. That that album is- is an ex excellent album. It's fire, bro. But, but yeah, you had said it too. Like, Garth Brooks would be a, one mm -hmm. that I could listen to over and over for a long time. Yeah. I liked Matchbox 20. Sure, um, yeah. Man. They were great. Um, They're still great. I my wife doesn't album. like um, just like music scores and stuff like mm -hmm. that, but I love like Hans Zimmer. I'll listen to like the Interstellar soundtrack mm -hmm. when I'm like reading and stuff. I, sure. I freaking love that stuff. I could probably do that forever. Really? And my As, wife would kill herself. I would have, I need to have um, vocals, lyric. I mean, I like <laughs> my listening the same to way. it. Like, my I, wife's the same way. I'll listen to scores now and then, but like I gotta have. Yeah, see, and I, I gotta have melody too dumb to process the lyrics. I don't even know what people are saying, so <laughs> yeah. I can listen to I just music. Um, Good question. So there you go. I like that. Yeah. Um, guys, I got to tell you about Nutrient Survival. It's made with real ingredients. It's made in America to keep Americans healthy, strong, and alert. Perfect for today, ready for anything ahead. From hearty, delicious entrees and nutrient-dense snacks to immunity-boosting drinks and strength-building shakes, each with 40 essential nutrients available in handy singles, daily use pantry packs, durable cans, and three to 90 day survival kits, keeping your world safe and your body in peak condition. This isn't your cheap, empty calorie, bland food storage. This stuff actually has nutritional value 
and it tastes wonderful. Check out their NREs, nutrition ready to eat. Those things are awesome. Head over to NutrientSurvival.com. Use our code CASUALPREPPERS. You're going to get 10% off your order. If you're looking for food storage and you're looking for long-term food storage that actually is good for you, you guys, Nutrient Survival is the only one out there, and uh, we can't recommend them enough. Yeah, seriously. Damn. They have a breakfast variety sampler, and right oh, now, yeah. I was looking, if you buy it, you can get a free bestseller variety sampler for free. Nice. Good but then deal. I don't think you can use our code, so whatever. But just put in but there. If you want to try it. Put it in there that you were sent by casual preppers. Yeah, the do, actually. Or you know what I mean? Yeah, do that. So, anyways, yeah. Go check them out. Nutrient Survival. Um, this one came from Le- Luke Wood. 17. Uh, what in Luke Wood? <laughs> yeah, Mr. You like that countertop is Luke Wood. <laughs> yeah, it's nice. Really nice. <laughs> Luke Wood. Yeah, that's fine grain. That's pure Luke Wood. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to make like a lukewarm joke. I couldn't get it I to know. work, though. <laughs> um, what entertainment preps do you have for when the power yeah, goes girl, out? That's Luke Wood. <laughs> <laughs> you feel my Luke Wood? He's 17. He'll get it. Yes, sir. He will. <laughs> um, what entertainment preps do you have for when the power goes out, Cam? Yeah, I think about these a lot, too, because um, the last thing you want is kids telling you that they're bored. That drives me up a wall. So, Oh, yeah. Um, we have board games, blank paper and pens. I'm telling you, my kids will do so much with that. Yeah. that that's probably all I really need. Mm-hmm. Um, I have a backup power supply for iPads and like a mm-hmm. digital drive with movies on it so that I can watch on my laptop. Nice. That's kind of my back as Can't well. beat that. Yeah. yeah, board games are kind of my number one too. Like, you know, you can definitely waste some good time with board games. Um, cards. Crack out Monopoly. Yeah, man. The apocalypse will be over. I'm about knock the table over. <laughs> I know. I was like, I'm going to spill I think I our drinks. Severed, I think I just <laughs> divided my freaking kneecap. Uh, sorry, buddy. I'm all right. Um, cards, just like regular card, card games. Oh, stuff. yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Books. Man, for me, it's books. I got a freaking crap ton of them. Way too many. So that's what I got. That's good. Mm-hmm. I'll make it. Yeah. <laughs> you're right. I about burped and I didn't want to offend gonna, Ashley. I thought you were going to throw up, maybe. <laughs> She's the only one who gets mad. I know. About she does get mad. Um, Chuckles Wagger. <laughs> oh, Chuckles Swagger. Chuckles Swagger. Chuckles Swagger. I like, like Chuckles Wagger. Chuckles Wagger. <laughs> Wagger, yeah. <laughs> Chuckles Wagger. <laughs> Chuck. Clee swag. <laughs> Clee swag. <laughs> yeah. Clee. Um, indoor hydroponics. Kay. Let's say you're all in a bunker and that's wicked awesome for an extended time and y'all want to go. This got to be from Canada, right? I don't know. Wicked? No, the only from, ever used no that. Boston. Do they? Wicked awesome. Do they really? Yeah. yeah <clears throat> y'all want to grow in the winter uh, indoors. Mm-hmm. How, do, how does one go about keeping the water full of nutrition for multiple season growing? Mm-hmm. Do I add mir- miracle grow? Or something equivalent to my preps. If the water gets contaminated, can it it's can it be cleaned again? Uh, pros and cons to this method. Also, who would win, RoboCop or Terminator? Okay, starting man, off, dude, you want us to write a book on hydroponics? <laughs> yeah, gotcha, man. It's a lot. First off, Terminator wins. Like, oh, yeah. that, I don't think that's even a. I put that too. The, dude, RoboCop has a human brain. Yeah, exactly. Terminator's he's AI, man. Yeah, and dude, he's robot. Yeah, yeah. He's Terminator. Kobe. Yeah. <laughs> It's me. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. I'm a freaking robot. Of course but, I'm going to win. But I know nothing about hydroponics. I know that there's water involved. It's That's about it. It's a it. big, man, it's a it's a freaking black hole of information. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I I got really interested in, in at, at a time that I was in a dark place in my life. <laughs> <laughs> it really got me through some stuff. Yeah. yeah. No, I think it's an awesome system, but mm. but truly like the best hydroponic system is one that has like you have fish in a pond and running water because it's circulating like their poop and crap around to feed the plants poop and crap those are both the same thing (laughs) they are i suggest Mm -hmm. you eat your crackers and stuff over the water (laughs) (laughs) eat your cookies over the water (laughs) yeah yeah let everything you do over the water and all that chrome and stuff gets in there and plants will eat. you do everything over the water yeah you do that's what you're saying but um I never thought about that. Yeah, you would probably need to have like uh, a Miracle Grow or something like that. Mm. I'd get like one of those like Miracle Grow powders because they're going to last a lot longer than the liquids. Mm. Add a little bit to that water, mm. to the kids' water too. Mm. <laughs> Bulking up. But I suggest saltines <laughs> over the water when you're. That's, there's no better way to do it. 
Really? But yeah, like that real super efficient mm-hmm. hydroponic system is like running water with um, animals in it. <laughs> Let ducks and cows go I got three out. raccoons in the water tank. <laughs> <laughs> Cam getting said, the nutrition. Cam said I needed it to, to grow my taters in the water. <laughs> Just go out and <laughs> scoop your dog's poop up. Got put in the water. Yeah. Need some nutrition in there. <laughs> Smells weird down here, dear. <laughs> yeah, that's the water. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. I okay. mean, that's a good question. I don't know. I don't know specifics of that. Okay. Mm-hmm. Good either. luck. It's you got time till winter. Zach Buck, fourteen. <laughs> What's your name? I'm Zach Buck. <laughs> yeah, sounds pretty. It's, he has a manly that's name. A good name. Yeah, Buck. He probably like There's a lot of bucks in here. <laughs> Is there? Yeah, like a lot of names have Buck in it. Really? What was the other one? What was the Buck Naked? <laughs> yeah. Was that one? No. What was the one? Was the two names were like some something and Buck, uh, Moose and Buck? <laughs> yeah, it was whatever. It was Moose and Buck. Huh? <laughs> Moose and Buck got married. Yeah, Zach Buck's cousin. Zach. <laughs> yeah. Um. <laughs> Yeah. Do I need an underground bunker or am I just freaking out? Also, can I wear a gas mask with facial hair? Yeah. These are big problems. Zach Buck, Zach. signing off. Take it slow, Zach. <laughs> you don't need a bunker and your beard's probably not going to get in the way of a lot. Yeah. Uh, you don't need a bunker. Yeah. Like, no one needs it. Yeah. But if you have So is that the only way into this prepping community? <laughs> So, how big a bunker I got to have to listen? <laughs> how big a bunker you got? <laughs> Zach Buck, take me to your bunker. <laughs> well, let's yeah. take a look at your bunker first, and we'll see if you can be part of this. I call it my bunker. <laughs> <laughs> Not my bunker. The bunker bunker. <laughs> the bunker bunker. <laughs> um, I, so, yeah. I got buck buds in there, too. <laughs> She ain't cost you about 50 bucks. Yeah. Come on in here. Yeah. Don't worry. She bucks everything good. Everything buck everywhere. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you're obsessed with that buck. You want to I like? Buck and bulls. Here's my little buck. <laughs> Come on. Big buck. Killed me a buck out there last <laughs> fall. I hunt buck. Mm. Love buck. I pay with bucks. I have bunk beds. <laughs> I have buck beds. Live in a bucker. <laughs> <laughs> Got a little problem with that word, don't you? <laughs> yeah. Um, mm. As for the mask, yes, yeah. it needs to safely seal around your beard. Either stuff it up in there or, like, there are some masks I know that can yeah. go around a beard, but mm-hmm. for the most part, you want to be safe. I wonder not- if you could just, like, put a bunch of petroleum jelly in it so it seals up. <laughs> <laughs> You know what I mean? Just Elmer's glue. <laughs> yeah, just so let that, it dry. Just so put the your mask on. Yeah, so it makes a good seal. Yeah. So maybe you like, just have when a you thing put in. the mask on, like they tell you to, like you know, without you close your little vent and then mm. suck inwards to see if it has any leaks. Mm-hmm. A lot of time with the beard, you're gonna find a leak. Yeah, sure. So Be I don't know. Careful. These are tough questions, Buck. Gosh damn, Zach Buck. I'm passing the buck on that one. <laughs> I don't know. Just, that's a good one. <laughs> yeah. Johnny Five Alive. Yeah. John Five Alive. John Five Live. He, John Five Live, yeah. Didn't, yeah. It needs to be alive. It does. Um, he's like, ow, piss. John. Forgot an A in there. Um, <laughs> this is like, uh, Chris did that. You, homie, he made a gamer tag on PlayStation. And he wanted to put your mom is fat, but he put your mom is a fat. And he had to keep it. <laughs> so he, he's had that ever since. Your mom is a fat. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I just thought I'm about that. I'm not paying anything. He's like, oh, I'm not changing this. I don't know how to change it. So your mom is a fat is my gamer tag. <laughs> Sounds like some and, little like and kid now I, from a different country. And now Isaiah's using it. So every time I see like he's playing with Lucy, it's like your mom is a fat. <laughs> playing with your mom is a fat. <laughs> your mom is a fat. Yeah. That's pretty funny. Yeah. Um, so he asks, uh, with Twisted Metal out now, the movie, I'm, I'm I assuming. I think it's a movie or, or a, a series? series. Yeah, I, I, I had to look up the trailer. I was like, oh, there isn't. Yeah, I don't know. I remember the game. And I'm mm-hmm. like, that was out a long time ago. I played it, man. I played uh, the crap which vehicle out of it. are you taking into the apocalypse? Twisted Metal or otherwise? Yeah, man. I did play a lot of Twisted Metal on, yeah, I remember on it. PS1. I had good music. You're like did jamming it, out. Yeah. 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 I remember like, rock. My buddy would always be like the ice cream truck. Wasn't there an ice cream <laughs> I was truck? I to say, that was yeah. like. My second pick. And then I would always use the little dune buggy because mm-hmm. I thought that was kind of cool. It did look kind of Mad Max. But as far as vehicle goes, I've really been looking at a Toyota, man. Like, ah, oh, gosh. It's a Forerunner Land Cruiser, Tacoma, something. 
I don't know. We've been talking about it, haven't we, Cam? We do. We've been having conversations. Yep. So anyway. We decided if one buys one, the other has to. Well, we're gonna it's just how it's going to go. We're both buying a Toyota. We can't go into the apocalypse no. with mismatching vehicles. We'd look idiots. We'd look like <laughs> idiots. I got to convince my wife of that. Like, yeah, look, me too. We both got to get this. It's going to look more intimidating. It's like, these guys are set up. It's like one guy got, has a Jeep. The other guy's got some Ford truck or something. We'll be like, who are these guys? Yeah. yeah. What do they know? Nah, they're uncoordinated. They probably don't even have a bucker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, and bet these guys don't buck up any yeah. at night. <laughs> yeah, idiots probably sleep on bunk beds. Yeah, I'm sure. Um, I I picked so <clears throat> Roadkill was that like Chevy Camaro. Oh yeah, I was like I that because I felt like I was Mad Max. Yeah, that's so cool. That's rad. Um, mm-hmm. yeah, I don't know, man. The the truck thing. Yeah, it's that's tough. The, that's the same. I I've been looking and like, my wife doesn't want to let me get anything. We're going to convince We're going to end that. So you got your raspberry stuff. Yeah. Do you want to survive or not? Yeah, this is survival. The pilot ain't going to make it. No. The Ford's no. got a too small of a cab. Exactly. It looks cool and it's good for pictures. It's awesome, yeah. <laughs> That's just, exactly. And it's loud. <laughs> yeah, it's super right? loud. So. Yeah, you can't hear anything inside it. Mm-mm. Um, is it you? Yeah. Is it? Yeah, I think I said okay. John 5 Live. Jade Marie 18. Jade Jede? Jede Marie. Marie. Yeah. With the current state of the world, would either of you travel outside the USA for leisure? Yes. For some leisure time. If I had money to do it, yes. <laughs> yeah. If I had money to do it, yes. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I've been looking at a few places I'd like to go in the next few years. Um, Taylor Swift think, concert overseas? Uh, yeah. I think the UK would be great. I do too, yeah. I would love to visit that place. I do too. So I'd um, like to go over there. Um, I'd love like New Zealand, any of those. Mm. And I do think the safety there is no different than the U.S. now. Probably not, no. Probably better, honestly. You just um, feel more comfortable in your yeah. unsafe environment. Yep. Than yeah, somebody those foreign else's. accents terrify me. If somebody comes running at me with like an English accent, yeah. I don't know what to do. I don't either. What do I do? Say, good day. Good day. What the? I'm going to beat your ass now. <laughs> and it's just like, what? He sounds smarter than Give me your wallet. Yeah. yeah I don't, mm, but I wouldn't yeah. know what to do. But like, I don't know. It takes a lot of planning because yeah. TikTok and all those social media posers, they've like destroyed all those places that are commonly visited. So you're blaming it on TikTok. I'm blaming it on social media for okay. ruining all those locations. Because okay. it's not like it's not like they're regular tourists. They're just going there, lining up, getting their mm. picture, getting out, and it just clogs up everything. People are the worst. Ah, they are the worst. <laughs> People are the worst. Yeah, so I've been I've been thinking about this because my wife and I have our 20-year anniversary Man, next year. Nice job. How crazy is that? That's a lot she with a robot. Been living with a robot Here's for 19 Ashley. years. <laughs> <laughs> I want to grease those hinges, baby. Um, but yeah, so we've been talking about, like, do we go overseas for something or do we, you know, stay around here? We don't know. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Robots don't care. <laughs> I will go anywhere in the world. <laughs> as long as there's not water. <laughs> don't get me wet. You actually don't like swimming and stuff, do you? I don't know. So he is a robot. I don't like heat. I'm overheating, babe. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's not It's not good. Yeah. Um. I can't believe, how did I get the, why am I a robot? Yeah, I don't well, get it. Well, I don't know. I haven't been yeah. married to you for 20 years. So. <laughs> no. She would know, I suppose. <laughs> uh, anyways. Yeah. Maybe, uh, maybe, maybe, maybe. She's like, we're not going anywhere. I don't mm-hmm. care anymore. We ain't gonna make it to twenty. <laughs> um, how do you say this one? Nine mm is my love language. Just like that. Oh, I did it right. <laughs> I was like, it's it looks, pretty self-explanatory. It looks super long and confusing, and I nailed it. Nine mm is my love language. <laughs> That's what I was gonna say. <laughs> yeah. I was like, Nana Min, Nimi Nimi Miss like my the, the Mad Gab game. Nana Miss Min Love Language. <laughs> it's like the Mad Gab game where yeah. you're saying a word, but. Nana Miss Min Love Language. Yeah. Say it again, slower. Nana Min Miss Min Love. Yeah. Uh, with Wi Fi alarms and living in such a tech dependent time, mm. uh, with Wi Fi alarms, okay. Um, what are some practical ideas for hardening your home in a heavy populated area? I don't get my home hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I haven't been able to get my home hard for a while. <laughs> well, the home people, this is the home hard section. Yeah. Get your home hard. You got a pill to get my home hard? <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, <laughs> I live in Houston, Texas. And she, uh, and, What's your address? And shit, the power goes down. <laughs> I live in Texas and shit, the power goes That's what I meant to say. I know. Uh-huh. 
Power goes out. That sounds so Texan. It does. Huh? I live in Houston. Shit. And power goes out every four or five minutes. Yeah. And people are wandering through the subdivision checking out the houses. <laughs> that <Chad laughs> house hard. <laughs> <laughs> Let me feel it. Nah. I have a dog, a generator, firearms, and safe-ish room. Mm. This is but, my safe-ish room. But I have French doors <laughs> and a huge bay window. Those doors French. <laughs> that ain't Texas. You got communist doors in your house. You say French doors, get a rope. Get, get like a rope. Pace. Eat a damn croissant for breakfast. <laughs> get out of our town. Yeah, Buck don't like that. Get out of here. <laughs> I thought about a razor wire fence, which looks great in every subdivision. It does, yeah. <laughs> but I'm sure that would uh, be a clear violation of HOA deed restrictions. Mm-hmm. And I doubt the Amazon driver would be happy about it. He'd be fine. Um those drivers are going to make bank. Those UPS drivers now? Mm-hmm. I don't know about the Amazon ones. I mean, maybe Amazon wouldn't care. They just throw my stuff across the lawn in here already. Yeah. Stupid Jeff Bezos. Yeah, that prick. Um, <clears throat> yeah, man. Living in an urban area is scary, kind of. I don't say Bezos. Oh, that's a new name. Bezos. Does he have a new name? No, I just said it weird. Oh, Bezos. Um, Bezos bubs. <laughs> He's the devil. Um, yeah, so... Uh, We've we've actually done a few episodes on like reinforcing hardening your house. Yeah, get that house sprayed high. down, made cement gets harder. Exactly. Um, yeah, talking like we've talked about re- reinforcing your doors and windows with mm-hmm. you know, there's different um, systems that you can buy. I think I've I've thought about this too. If I was in a, a really densely populated area, I, I and if you weren't planning on your number one thing bugging out, which most probably aren't. Um, I would work on that inner uh, portion of your home being more secure. Obviously, I'd set up like stuff on the outside to prevent them getting in. But once they get in, then you're kind of safer in that that middle area or wherever <laughs> basement. I don't know, safeish. Yeah, safeish. So room. there's a, there's all kinds of little things you can get. You can get those trip wires that you know that fire a 12 gauge round just to scare them off, or it'll puff some pepper powder in your face. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah. Put some signs out. Tell them you got a dog. Mm-hmm. And uh, tell them those French doors are locked. Yeah. Good <laughs> luck. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, fences with locking gates are always a nice deterrent for, you know, security lighting. Yeah. Again, it is huge, I think. Any robber don't like to be lit up. Yeah. I'm automatic guessing. stuff always helps. Yeah. Like, I don't know what I'm getting into. Yeah. Upgrading the door jams. And you said non techy so maybe a security system. Oh, I put yeah, security did, system huh? there, but he kind of said non techy So I don't know. Yeah, I think the biggest thing is upgrading the door jams because everybody's going to try and kick through a window or a door. Yep. You know what I mean? That's kind of how they're going to get in. Yeah. Double check those door frames because we, we yeah. were talking about that. It's like mm-hmm. they're it's, you're just going to bust off the trim and get mm-hmm. through your door in a second. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. CJ Bailey 4. How do you guys store water in your vehicles? I keep a few MREs in my truck, but realize the heaters are useless without water, plus the whole need to drink water. I, like, to what live does that thing. mean? Is he talking about like heaters, like the heater core using the MREs have that little the heat the food? Some oh. of the MREs do. You know what I mean? I got you. Okay. So that's what he's saying. I didn't. Yeah. I, I don't think I have one of those. Yeah, so I so I do it very simply. I use those water pouches, man. Like yeah. that to me is the easiest way because a lot of people are like, those things are so stupid. Why do you have those? Because they hold up in in extreme heat and cold. Right. They don't burst. They don't they don't go bad. The foil packets keep the water good for the amount of time that's printed on the thing. So yeah. that's why I like them. And you can like stuff that stuff. There's so much easier everywhere. stuff in there than a water bottle. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's what I do. Yeah, when we travel, I I go overboard with water bottles. Like we have tons of cup holders in our car, mm-hmm. and I'm like, I fill them all up with water bottles. See, oh yes, I fill the cup holders up. I with just water. pour in water. They splash out if it gets bumpy. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody, watch out! Taking yeah. a left turn. Take a sip. Cover before we your come arm. around this corner. <laughs> I just have straws all <laughs> over in there. <laughs> oh, you gotta man. do what you gotta do. Yeah. Yep. You know what I mean. So yeah, but I just put a bunch yeah. of water bottles all around, and then I have some. Tucked in those little empty, you know, quarter painter, quarter painter holes. <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm b- auto body special. Quarter painter. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah. Okay. I like there that. You go. Yeah. 
You know what else I like? Oh, and I throw in, I have filters in there too. Yeah, like, for sure. Just in case. Just in case. I really like mission of the mission of Off the Grid Surplus. Um, their mission is to inspire greater connection through adventure. These guys do like overlanding stuff. They do lots of cool freaking things. They do that by creating extremely functional and everyday wearable products for a great price to take you off the grid. How do they do it? They simplify your clothing options so that you only need one piece of clothing instead of three or four. They, they simplify. And if you want to do anything in your life, simplifying is a great thing to do. It is a good It is fantastic. They combine get the best- Get their new onesie. Get the new off the- One day, they're going to make a onesie yeah. for us. They combine the best features from outdoor workwear and tactical into one everyday wearable package. Check out their site, offthegridsurplus.com, and get an extra 15% off with our code CASUALPREPPERS15. Easy to remember. Like free clothes right there. Basically. Basically. Yeah, you buy 100 pieces of clothing, 15 of them are free. Isn't that how math works? Yeah. I don't know. Something like that. So go check them out. Okay, guys? Yeah, their stuff's awesome. Mm -hmm. I plan on wearing some this weekend. I do too, yeah. So. Um, Joel W. Edwards. Joel W. Edwards. <laughs> Smith and Edwards' brother <laughs> that didn't get in on the... I'm related to Buck Smith. <laughs> but, Smith yeah. and Edwards. Those are genuine names. Mm-hmm. What's more likely, external bad actors, China, Russia, creating unrest in the U.S., or a Twitch streamer promising free stuff? Was there something with that? Yeah. I didn't see what happened. This last week, um, a Twitch streamer said they were giving away a bunch of stuff in Central Park. and Oh, the worst place on all the All hell broke loose. Like, there were just, like, videos of all, like, mobs of kids. No kidding. Like, just, like, Where's the parents? Jumping. No parents? <laughs> Where's the parents? They were like, they weren't like five year old kids. These were like 18 year old yeah, kids. The worst. Yeah. They were like jumping on cars and just like ruining stuff because they actually had to declare a state of emergency. Oh my God. It was insane. What's wrong with our country? I don't know. People have gone mad. That's what I'm saying, man. Why didn't I hear about that? I would have went. <laughs> Get some free stuff. I want PS5. <laughs> I, I don't know, like the mob mentality thing, it, it seems to be getting worse. Yeah, it does. Because you get four or five kids together that think they can just do whatever they want. Yeah, um, yeah well. And that's what gets scary, man. It's it's like people are, you know, they feel like once they're- law, well, Yeah, once there's like <clears throat> chaos from yeah. some any event. Right. And, and I think there's just like sort of a, a feeling of general unrest because like- It the does The economy sucks- like, like, it's hard to future? get ahead. Yeah, like, and so people, they get into a situation like that, and they just go nuts. Yeah. Right? Oh. It's crazy, dude. We're going to be our own demise, I, I think, think we are, too. So, on that, I think it's just going to be with him. Yeah. Yeah, weird stuff. They're probably already playing some, like, those external bad actors are already playing with the insides of the United States. That sounds super weird. Playing with your insides. <laughs> you get inside. <laughs> I don't know what voice that was. <laughs> you get the outside, I get the inside. I'll play with the inside. We don't need the tech from outside. No. We get on the inside. Get in there and play a little bit with them on the inside. <laughs> Watch this. Twitch free product. <laughs> they Today love, at five. They love to play their video games. <laughs> you watch what happened. Everybody gonna go nuts. Mm. We are about to attack the front of Ukraine. Why don't we say uh, Twitch downtown Boston free product? <laughs> this is going to go America so well. America won't even pay attention. Vladimir is going to love this idea. <laughs> they love Vladimir. <laughs> yeah. Um, this one came from Mick Love and Pew Life. Oh, the Mick Love's a good sandwich. <laughs> yes, sir. If you and your family were hiking for the day while actually hiking, not talking about what you leave in the car. Okay, so not the stuff you leave oh, in the car yeah. when you go hiking. I see. Do you take no bag, just a few essentials, a go bag, or 72-hour bag? If no bag besides water, what essentials do you carry with you while walking? Very specific on what we want. So honestly, almost So you're every asking if we take a bag, a go bag, but if no bag. <laughs> yeah, if no bag. No bag or go bag. Um, I almost always, when we do something like this, I just throw my EDC pack on. Like, yeah. because that's why I love it because it's really easy to throw on in, in situations like this. That way, if something does go weird, I've got a first aid kit. I've got a way to start a fire. I've got pretty much everything. Yep. I've got some extra food. I've got some extra water. Um, that's why, that's usually what I do. And usually like everybody's going to have a bottle of water on them. Yeah. You know, so that's usually. Like other hikers. Yeah. No, just I mean, my kids or my <laughs> wife. You got some water? Yeah. Give me your, your water. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty much the same. Um. 
I usually have those little things in a bag ready to go. Um, I also wear my slide belt. Yeah. I always wear that one when mm-hmm. I go hiking because it's got a knife in there, flashlight. a striker, and a, a flashlight. Mm-hmm. And then have some snacks. Yeah. There, so. Pretty simple. Good stuff. Yeah. yeah. That's pretty good. Uh, Joshua Mashburn. Mm. I don't know what to say. <laughs> I thought I'd have something good, but I don't. Nope. He's like, dang it. Um, <laughs> if you two got telephoned into a slasher film, <laughs> I didn't catch this until I, I read yours. <laughs> yeah. If you two got telephoned into a slasher film, which one would you want? It too. <laughs> it, 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 I read this like five times trying to work out he what he was asking. Asked this question on his phone. Yeah, I think he meant if we were teleported into yeah. a slasher film. Yeah. So Which like, one would you want it to? Do, 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 do. Hello, slasher film. <laughs> yeah. Like I don't like what is what is this? I don't know. But yeah, teleported <laughs> is kind of what I <laughs> thought he was yeah. trying to say here. If that's the case, and I have to get teleported into a slasher film, one hundred percent, I'm going with Scream. Yeah, it is my favorite slasher film. Maybe one of my favorite horror movies of all time. We wa- we we watched it the other day. We'll watch. We'll, we'll watch it the other day, and it's so good. Yeah. Um, the soundtrack, the writing, the kind of like tongue in cheek feel, you know, to Stuff the whole no one thing. else pays attention. To. Yeah, but no, but it's like it's almost making fun of slasher films, but not like to a, a point where it's like a parody. Do you know yeah. what I mean? So that I've never I seen just, Scream. Never you watched what? any of them. I've never watched them, dude. I know. No, I don't. I I don't particularly like love slasher films. Oh, and now I'm at a point in my life where my wife controls what I do, so Bro, we don't watch any. We have. I've to never seen. Scream. Watch it. Yeah, it is good. You <laughs> would enjoy it. I guarantee you would enjoy it. I'd watch it. Oh my gosh! I just have never watched it. We are. Uh, that I makes me why. sad, <laughs> dude. We've got to watch it. All right. So good. Yeah, I haven't seen Scream. Okay, put that on the list. I have seen, um, what's the, <laughs> Scary Movie, which makes oh, fun of them. I don't know if I've even seen that one. <laughs> That's crazy, man. Yep, nope, never seen it. Wow. So okay. I don't know which one to go into, because I haven't watched many of them. Putting that on the list. Okay. <laughs> we gotta go watch that, man. Watch it right after Monster, Monster Squad. Oh, Monster Squad. Yeah. Okay, P.E. Pro. <laughs> I like that. P.E. Pro. <laughs> Physical Ed Pro. Yeah. Been and doing retired from, last year. Yeah, got the shorts and the whistle. You know. <laughs> yeah, gone pro. <laughs> Been yeah. going to PE for twelve years. Straight. Ran the amateur league for a while, but I'm pro now. <laughs> got my That's card. Pretty awesome. Oh, uh, okay. <clears throat> is it? Is it my turn again? I don't know. Just no. Read I read. It. Okay, okay I'll, I'll read. read it. Which is more <laughs> valuable? Okay. Knowing how to grow slash store crops or hunt and identify edible wild plants and why. Grow and store. Yeah, that's that's what I went with, too. Yeah. Grow and store. Yeah. I, I, I don't and, know. And like, because, like, I kind of feel like with hunting, uh, maybe in, like, in an SHTF situation, and, and obviously this very much depends on the situation you're in and how long it is, but you're much like less likely to get hurt growing yeah. zucchini. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, or, than trying to go out and yeah. uh, hunt an elk or something. Yeah. Sprinkle seeds out. <laughs> Hold a bag muscle again. <laughs> I told you I shouldn't be gardening, babe, without stretching I'm first. I'm sick of this. Should be hunting. Ah, I'm going to go back to my yeah. hard house. Hunting sounds, you know, hunting sounds way more manly and sure. and you get a lot more meat. I mean, I've done it. I've done it on uh, yeah. on Oregon Trail <laughs> yeah. and in real life. You did it on real life, yeah. But um, Again, if people haven't seen the film The Rookie... <laughs> From Wild Air, you got to go watch it. Is it is good. It it's is good. fun, man. Because I didn't grow up hunting, no. you know, big game, and so that was my opportunity. Yeah. Um, but I just feel like there's going to be a lot more people hunting during that, thinking that's their primary way of yeah. getting food. And I ain't going to be out there foraging while they're hunting, I'll tell you that. It's <laughs> <laughs> no, not a good idea. No. Yeah. Um, and then foraging is like, you spend like six hours and find six berries yeah that are probably gonna give you diarrhea yeah you're probably having diarrhea for sure so, um, i'm definitely going with the growing store okay yeah me too growing store growing store ethan tatro tat tatro 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 uh is there a memorable situation where your preps came in the most handy also would you rather go to jail for a year or go to jail with a rubik's cube then you can leave when it's done <laughs> this one i was like oh easy i'll do rubik's cube and i was like maybe I would be there longer than Maybe that. I'll never get it done. They are freaking hard. Yeah, I would I think I'd pro- I think I'd take my chance I would getting too. it, it done. It gives you something to do. <clears throat> my nephew can do it in like 30 seconds. Yeah, once you figure out that formula. Yeah. 
Yeah, but yeah, I probably just, wouldn't. Yeah, no. So it, then I started like, well, maybe I would just deal with a year. I don't <laughs> but know, I'd rather have something like to do. I'd rather be trying something in jail. Like, jail doesn't sound that bad <laughs> well, if you I, didn't That was the family. other thing I put. Depends on the prison yeah. and the inmates, you Right, know? yeah. Like, oh, I have to sit there and read and work out? I know. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> they feed me food every day. I know. I've I don't have to go to too. work. I'm like, I've thought that too. I'm like, geez, maybe it'd be better. That's not that bad. Doesn't Way less. Bad. I'm I'm in jail right now. <laughs> I'm in a different kind of jail. Uh, um, prison of life. Yeah. Um. I'm for me like a memorable situation. I think I've said this before, but I came up on a car wreck a few years ago, and I had a nice. I just put in like a really nice first aid kit, and it came in handy. Like I brought it out and. The one Put a band-aid on his forehead. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Kissed him on the forehead. <laughs> there you go, buddy. Dead. Yeah, it was like these two Asian kids got That was wreck. crazy that that happened. Yeah, and his buddy was in there like out like a light blood, covered in blood, and he came out and he was just like, he had blood splatter on him. That's I'm so like, crazy, dude. Dude, uh, let's get something. So I got out my thing and I actually had a bunch of wipes too, so I helped wipe himself down and he had a couple of cuts to put some stuff on and I'm like, God damn, I'm like a... <laughs> EMT over here, <laughs> you know? Yeah. But it, it was cool that it actually came in handy. What's going on here? I got a pick line in and everything. <laughs> He's got IV antibiotics. Yeah, I do started. trick you out on me real it. quick. <laughs> Everything's fine. I got it under control. I think I'm just going to take him home for a bit and work <laughs> on him there. Yeah. I'm trying to pull the car out. Watch out. <laughs> I'm hitched up to it. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> yeah. The What did I put in there for that? Um Pins in prison inmates. Battery that, jumper. That first, oh, yeah, the battery jumper. That thing's got me out of trouble mm-hmm. a lot of times. For sure. I should get a new battery. You probably should, yeah. <laughs> no, it's it's been super useful. It's probably one of my favorite like EDC things because yeah. I don't have to ask anybody for jumper cables. Yeah. That's the number one thing. Mm-hmm. And then also my first aid kit meds, you know, yeah. diarrhea meds, they come in super handy. For sure, man. So. 100%. Larry Gould, Gouldsmith. It sounds like he's like a... Really good movie spirit. producer or something, yeah. doesn't he? Yeah, he does. Producing movies. I always got another movie kinda, out. Kind of shady. Yeah. They were goosmith. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. He's making backroom deals in Hollywood, you know. <laughs> something about it. My wife's friend was telling her about clouds made by the government. Government. Have you heard about this, and what do you think about it? Sounds like chemtrails on steroids. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We have kind of talked about this before. Yeah, those clouds have been fake forever, though. Yeah, ain't you didn't real. know that? Those are fake clouds, buddy. It's called cloud seeding. Yep. What hey. was the project uh, that the United States, what was the, that they mm. that they did it? Project Cumulonimbus. Oh, yeah. Like that. <laughs> that sounds real. I have no good. idea. Sounds like it could be real, though, huh? Yeah. I don't know what it was, but yeah, we've talked about this a few times. Who knows, man? Project yeah. White Puff. <laughs> yeah. Project Sprinkle. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. if they can make it rain here more, I'm all for it. Just yeah, figure it same out. Same here. Yep. You know? Yeah. Get it done. Get that rain injected up into those clouds. Mm-hmm. I think it's estrogen, is what I said, that they are squirting up into those clouds. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Causing them to cry all day. Yeah, that's right. Don't work on no Sorry robot. about that joke. <laughs> that was rude. I'm a robot. Don't understand joke. <laughs> okay. Don't care what it does to anyone else. <laughs> um,. Will Ames mm-hmm. at the target. Will Ames. <laughs> Will Ames. Will Ames. Oh, that sounds great. <laughs> sounds great. Let yeah. me say it seven more times. See, yeah, see, see if, if something, something comes, comes up. up. <clears throat> oh, man. This is a long Just read it. <laughs> Would you like robot to read? Considering the economic <laughs> status in this country, <laughs> I've heard from many who've had to put off preparedness. This is the little heart string tugger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Preparedness due to financial constraints. Some even resorting... Uh, to those who are middle-aged or near with children moving into their parents' homes, having to live and work together in order to just survive. Yeah. Considering this, what are some of the most affordable but most commonly used preps for people to start with for the sake of just getting something to work with in the case of an emergency? Uh, some I've spoken with, I've referred to the podcast, and they'll likely be tuning in. Thank you. I hope we do help. Yes. Uh, even just considering absolute basics are things that uh, they're not accustomed to considering in their previously normal lives. Yeah, dude, it is really hard out there right now. It's kind of weird. I think I think um, people are like ignoring it too. Yeah, they like, are. They're just pretending like it's I, fine. I can just buy a bunch of stuff because 
around town, it sure doesn't seem like oh anybody's gosh, struggling man. here. No, but I know there. I know there is struggle. And every I know, time I go to the grocery store, like the inflation is just insane. It's super expensive, man. It's, it's freaking getting like if you go out to eat at like McDonald's with your kids, you're like oh, we'll quickly we'll go quick and yeah, oh my gosh, get something cheap. Yeah, and it's like thirty five bucks. It's not cheap. I'm like holy crap. Yeah, I don't. It, it's really tough, and I, I understand like people moving in with their parents. Like it makes sense, man. I don't know how We've young. Can, <laughs> me and my wife are like, why don't we sell right now? I know. Because houses are high. Yeah. And California dummies are coming in. They don't know. But the, the problem is you have nowhere to go. They'll just come and buy it. Yeah, they 100%. Like, they will. I can they, make like, people don't even like, thousand. They don't even wait or make any decision. Like, yeah. maybe we should see if there's any better price. So it's like, boom. As soon as something is yeah. up for sale, they snatch it up. Um, you got nowhere to go. That's the hard part, That's man. the thing. You know? So It's really tough. We're but, like, maybe we'll move in just to like build yeah. some wealth, but I don't think it'll be worth anything. In you know, 10 years, that money that we saved is going to be- I know. We're not going to be able to buy a house again. Right now, I've yeah, I'm just better off staying with my low mortgage payment. Yeah, like it same. really is the best. But here's some things you could consider, um, especially when like frugality is part of your prep. Like you just don't have a lot to spend, but you want to get something off the ground. To me, again, you guys are sick of hearing this. Emergency plans, like it doesn't cost you anything, right? And it gets you so far ahead in in your preparedness. Emergency plan slash um, threat assessment. Like, start there. Mm -hmm. It's a really good place to start. And then move on to health and fitness. Again, that can be something that's basically free as well. Right. If you have those two things, man, you're going to be so much better off yeah, in are. pretty much any situation. And then you can start to work on some things for, like... Uh, you know, flashlights and, you know, backup batteries and stuff for uh, power outages and right. whatnot and something right. in your car. But start there first. Start with an emergency plan and then work forward. Right. Yeah. And I didn't have a lot more to add to that other than, like, there are some really cheap items that you can <clears throat> get. The, you know, camping gear from Amazon that's, like, kind of cheaper if you wanted something. Like, what sure. if we have to bug out? You can get a lot of stuff yeah. for pretty cheap. We've even done an episode on under $100 mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Um the other thing, and I know this is really hard um, when when finances is you know the primary yeah. reason you're probably with, but even if you're putting aside a little at a time, like five and ten dollars, just yeah. so you have this cushion, like mm -hmm. you can usually do that, and it makes a like a world of difference on your mind. Like yeah. just knowing, like I got five hundred dollars, you know, put away yep. for for emergency funds, cash readily available. You're mm -hmm. better than most people that are just blowing money left and right right yeah, now. Yeah, man. Because not a lot carry that. So avoid those credit cards as much as you can. And so yeah, I know it's hard. Building but, a little cash yeah. stockpile while you're, you know, with your parents, I think it's a great idea. And I think it that's probably the better time to do or one mm -hmm. of the better times to do it because you're not paying your mortgage yeah. anymore. And I know that sucks, but you you do have that little extra cash that yeah. you can probably start building a little cushion that just makes you feel tons better. Yep. I like that. Good, good Angelo, ideas. I'm a duck. I'm a duck. Knock knock. Who's there? Amador. <laughs> Junior. <laughs> yeah. Um, My little door. You? Yeah, sorry. My little door. I'm taking over. Me? Yeah. No, okay. So, I read that you novel. are on a road trip and have to stop at a gas station. You are starving and there are no other options for food but the roller snacks. Are you grabbing a hot dog or a beef and cheese taquito? <laughs> Dude, this is a really easy thing for me. I'm yeah. going with the hot dog. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Um, you can see mostly what the contents are. It's we all don't the know same what they tissue. Are, but yeah, it's all the same tissue. It's like a consistent but tissue. But the at ones least. that are wrapped in like a tortilla, you don't know what's in there. They, there could be anything in there. And yeah. I like from my college days of working, mm -hmm. I basically have built up an immunity to Dude, the hot dogs. Me too. Like, I ate a lot of them. Working with, I worked with my dad for a lot of years when I was younger. Every morning, like 6 a.m., <laughs> we stop at Sev and we yeah. each get a hot Dude, dog. Dude, I loved them though. Oh, they were so good, man. The Bahama Mom was great too. Yeah. But those taquitos, I've had those several times. <laughs> they do wage a war inside of my bowels. And that, I believe it. And that is one that I usually do not win, that war. That is a losing battle for me. So Yeah, I can tell that they would destroy me. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm going with. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> it's got a war going on in your throat right <laughs> now. Charles have good. Charles have good. What cover items do you <laughs> Add to your preps. Me, personally, I stuck up on whiskey, cigars, and penguin meat. Okay, that makes more sense now. I didn't realize who would ask the question, but I'm like, penguin meat? Oh, uh, you didn't see it was Charles Hapkins. I didn't see it was Charles Hapkins. Charles Hapkins. Charles Hapkins. Penguin meat connoisseur. <laughs> Did you say connoisseur? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. 
I'll eat a little brick of ice. <laughs> yeah. Just drop that in that whiskey. That's right. I can totally see. This is exactly what I would think you'd be eating. 100%. <laughs> yes. So for me, comfort items. Books. They make me comfortable. <laughs> games. I'm comfortable with games. Yep. Toilet paper. <laughs> That's great. Look, man, it, it, just knowing that I've got a toilet paper uh, stockpile makes me comfortable. Mm-hmm. So there you go. Yeah, that's good. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, chocolate's a good one to store. Yeah. Everybody eats chocolate. Yeah. Some audio books. I like to listen to the sure. books. Um, usually when we're like in a camp or something, my kids are all sleeping, I'll put those in. It's like, listen to a book while you guys sure. and your mom Erotica. Like to kill each other. Coke and Romance. macaroni. Coke yeah. and macaroni. Yep, always. Always, a, always, always like a cyberpunk romance erotica type thing. <laughs> Yeah. Exactly what I listen to. Mm-hmm. Sounds like oh, you. Oh, man, I love it. <laughs> love it so much. I just, it's my genre. I don't know <laughs> what to tell you. Oliver Odr- o- Odkirk. Odkirk. Ooh, they cook. Odkirk. He's not the one that tells Olivier me Olivier Odkirk. I said Oliver. Man, I can't even read. <gasps> Olivier. Olivier Odkirk. Odkirk. Oh, this is a person from Amsterdam. That makes more sense. Oh, yeah. It's like, that's a weird name for someone from, like, Texas or something. <laughs> You're not from Texas. As a person in a country with strict gun laws, Old Kirk. I what, you say that. what would you guys recommend as to self-defense slash long-range hunting? Crossbows are also illegal here, unfortunately. They even banned pocket knives on our person here. Love from Amsterdam. Man, it's it's tough. <laughs> I don't know what you do. It's really tough. Get a whole bunch of sticks. You guys sticks. just hugging all day over there? <laughs> yeah. Get some sticks. And Staring some, at rainbows. Yeah. Picking tulips. Yeah. Um, I, I, for me, I, this is a tough one, but I think I would probably So I found the on, place to, for you to go for your anniversary. Know, right here. Sounds huh? like the safest place on the planet. It really does. I would, I'd love to go to Amsterdam. I would too. Honestly. All those little places around there. Um, if I were you, I would focus on some sort of self-defense training, right? That makes the most sense. Maybe boxing, jujitsu, Krav Maga, those types of things are all going to be great because- What about rock and sling? Are they illegal? You think? Probably. Like David and Goliath? Yeah. Probably. <laughs> Yeah. But you could fashion one real quick if you had to. Just take off your undies and <laughs> get a bungee cord and go. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. We should do that. I think the bra bit. has a real... Oh, like, yeah. It could be customized. I don't a wear a bra very often, though. <laughs> know, That's the problem. I'm saying. That's the first thing I'm going to ask my wife to do. <laughs> take your bra off. I got to make a slang. I got a fight. <laughs> Look, we, we're getting in a fight here pretty quick. <laughs> you need to take that bra every off. Every chance. Every chance I get. <laughs> Oh, little, guess what? We're in trouble. Guess what? I need that, bro. Feeling uneasy. We practice this, I need babe. to tie his logs up. Come here. <laughs> it's the only material that works. Yeah. So. Mostly spandex. Yeah. So. And, uh, tactical pens. Yeah. You know, yeah, for yeah, close yeah. combat. The long range stuff, I don't know I what don't you're going to do, you're man. I don't think you're going to. But the thing <laughs> is, if you're fighting in that country, no one else has long range stuff. That's true. You're pretty much. Except for if the Russians invade <laughs> or something, true. then you're in trouble. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know either. It's, cool. it's a hot, tough one. Um, guys, today's podcast is brought to you by Tac Pack, the only, only monthly tactical subscription box with useful professional grade stuff inside. Use our code Casual Preppers. Get a free seventy dollar machine made part from Next Level Armament. If you're from Amsterdam, just forget this. This ain't gonna work for you. But if you live in the good old US of A and you love you love guns and you love EDC knives and stuff like that. Go to Tac Pack, use our code Casual Preppers, get that free gear. Okay. Yeah, yeah it practically it. is free. <laughs> practically. Um, oh, how how lucky are you, Nick Ryan? <laughs> I'll make this short since it might be Cam's turn. Oh, it's hilarious. What do you think the spring summer 2024 pre-election scare will be? Aliens, threat of imminent war, food storage, shortage. shortage. I just screwed it up. Dang yeah, it. Yeah, well, you know. Worker shortages, etc. Guess what, Nick? Your name rings with rain. Oh my god! <laughs> oh, you butthole! I hope that uh, never again. Oh my gosh! He just got all. He got banned. Man, he just got all that he was hoping for. Yeah, he did, man. But what I was gonna say <laughs> is, Nick, your name rhymes with dick. Yeah, that's yeah. the end of that. That's question. the end of that question. I ain't even answer it. Yeah, he's not. Yeah, you made you made. He Cam got me mad. so worked up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that you fumbled your words, and he never does like, that. Oh, I did it. I did it. I made it happen. Man. Yeah, that's a good he just one. just got all, all of his wildest dreams just mm-hmm. came true right there. Um, I'm rooting for a big, like, alien reveal at the Democratic National Convention. That's what I think is going to happen. Yeah. Whatever. You know? 
That sounds good. I like that. Okay. I ain't answering it. Sam Ole Stadsvold. 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 That sounds sweet. How do you deny someone in New York? Stadsvold. Stadsvold. He lives over by the Stadsvolds. <laughs> <laughs> you got the Stadsvold that right. You did it wrong. <laughs> I'm your uncle, Argyle. <laughs> it's a whole different country. We gotta, yeah. Um, how do you deny someone into your prepper group? Scenario being SHDF random neighbor that knows you prep shows up. All you know is this person is maybe a friend or a nice person, but they would contribute nothing to your group. You know by sending them away you are creating a potential enemy. So what do you do? Side note from a previous mispronun- mispronunciation. <laughs> he just won too. My middle name is pronounced Oli. Sam Ole Stadsvold. Stadsvold. Ole. Ole! I'm your uncle Stadsvold. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, man. I would say give him, like, something from your decoy stash. And yeah. say, look, that's all I can do. I'm sorry. that I didn't prep for everybody else. I'm a casual prepper. Yeah. All right? And all the while, you're cleaning your 556. Five, yep. You take that. I'd send them on some, like, mission to prove themselves. Yeah. <laughs> Go out. Idea. Yeah. Find me mm-hmm. a Luger. <laughs> I need a Luger. <laughs> um, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know either. I think I think the decoy stat of uh, uh, just all the garbage. You're yeah, like, here it's a good pack. I know that you'll do expired well with ravioli it. or something. You know, <laughs> yeah. like yeah. here you go, buddy. Here's a mountain house eggs. And, <laughs> yeah, you know, probably still wouldn't give <laughs> those it away near the bathroom. Yeah, um, Patrick Grove. Mm-hmm. In your opinion. What is the best vegetable to grow in the garden? Vegetable. <laughs> Which vegetable is the best? Um, would it be a high output crop or a low maintenance crop? Hey, why not both? As, or maintenance, as my mom would say. Maintenance. Why not both, buddy? Seriously. Look for me. The one time I grew stuff, zucchini, like all I had to do is put it in the ground. It's amazingly like efficient yeah. around here. That big old fat zucchini Drives, the size of your arm. It's almost like too much, really. Like, yeah. Oh, stop. I know. Yeah, zucchini. In our area, grows mm-hmm. like mad. I don't yeah. know. Maybe it's all across the board. Who knows? But I, I did look up and see that carrots, potatoes, and tomatoes, and cuecumbers tend to be, um, I, mean, I don't know about that because tomatoes. Tomatoes are tough, dude. Tomatoes are tough. Maybe it's just here. There's that a certain tough. type though. Like I've like cherry tomatoes. They will go bonkers. Like you just get like pounds and pounds. I just don't of, love cherry. Like I'll eat them. Yeah. I like I, them. There's too many for the plant. Like yeah. you get way too many. Um. But yeah, carrots, potatoes, tomatoes, and cucumbers tend mm-hmm. to be a fairly high yield and low maintenance. Hmm. So there you okay. go. There you go. Corn can go to hell for all. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I have the hardest time getting really? corn to grow in uh, like in the uh, above ground like garden boxes. Yeah, it just doesn't grow well, dude. I threw corn and they grew so easy. for See, me. I think it, it's got to be my soil. No, Maybe. I, don't know. I ain't testing it. Uh, Ross Schoenwald. Okay. Okay. What's your biggest pet peeve in prepping forums people get stuck on? I didn't even have to go over didn't this. You? Okay. You yeah. put it in. It's the 556 five, preppers. Yeah. The, the gunners. Guns, ammo, that's prepping. Yeah. It's like you they, go into some of those and every single post is about firearms, ammunition, yeah. guns. All, it's like everything. They're just criticizing each other yeah. the whole time too. Yeah, it's like they're not even friends. I don't think any of them yeah. that are that way have anybody to like <laughs> talk about their guns. No boy with. likes them. They just talk to themselves. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, but yeah, that's mine for sure. Charlotte Fulton mm. sounds like an exercise company. Sounds like a peloton, like a couch that pulls <laughs> out. Doesn't sound a, like a couch. <laughs> that's not what I was bad. going with. <laughs> yeah. Power outages are likely in uh, most SHTF. Do you recommend generators as a prep, or better to learn to cope without power? If a generator is what's the best to store, uh, what's the best way to store fuel without it going stale? Mm. Or getting contaminated. This tastes gross. <laughs> or getting contaminated. I think your gas is contaminated. <laughs> well, I definitely recommend generators, man. If you can afford one, like, why not? Yeah. I mean, coping. People with- get, I think, with the generators, you get, I, I recommend, like, 3,000 watts and above. But don't get caught up in that. Like, if you can get one for a good deal, or yeah. just get one. Get something, can for run sure. something. Yeah, run exactly. A, run a light. I do think that coping without power is a great thing to learn how to do. Mm-hmm. But like, I mean, and again, this is like very much depends on the situation that you're in. If it's a short term power outage, like why not have a generator to get you through it? If it's long term, like your fuel's only going to last so long anyways. Yep. Right. And so yep. being able to cope without 
generating power like that is probably a good thing. Um, but also having like just those smaller battery banks that you can charge via solar stuff. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. You know, um, and fuel, fuel is really tough. I mean, you just basically have to rotate and treat it and it's a pain it's in the tough. butt. It's yeah. a pain in the butt. You can buy the cans of like two stroke, or not two stroke, you know, you buy the cans for like four stroke, yeah. at like lows and stuff. They'll store a little longer. Mm-hmm. Fuel's tough and there's a lot of opinions on it. Um, people say you can store it in a propane tank and yeah. do whatever you want. Um, like <laughs> I don't have any, I don't care to do whatever you want. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, know. I don't know. I don't know. Whatever. But uh, I think I think it's good. Like I think camping helps you kind of feel like what electronics and things are you dependent upon mm-hmm. that you'll not have when the power goes out. Speaking of camping, Cam and I are going tomorrow. Yes, we are. Uh, We're excited, aren't we? Yep. I haven't done that in a couple of years. It's been forever. Yeah. Ridiculous. Anyways, guys, that is the Q&A for today. Thank you so much for listening. Um, if you guys could do something for me, Take two seconds right now. Get out your phone. Make sure you're subscribed. And if you are subscribed, send an episode to a buddy, a friend. Yes. Just take two seconds and, and share it out to somebody who doesn't know about us. Because uh, if this ends, I don't have anything else. Yeah, this is all in we life. have in our lives. You guys are keeping us alive and sane <laughs> and mentally. Man, seriously. Uh, I agree. Uh, yeah, healthy. So we need you. Um, and the more that... The, the more this grows, the more interesting things we can do yeah, outside exactly. the podcast as well. So please just take two seconds, share it to a friend. Say, hey, we, I like these guys. I don't want them to go away. I don't want them to go away. All right. Thanks, guys. Uh, stay survived. <laughs>